Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm going to show you how WordPress uh, includes files and folders and other items from the WordPress core within your themes and plugins and your website. And the reason why this is important to understand is because it gives you a better overall understanding of how WordPress works. And when you're developing themes and plugins, this is important to know. In order to get started, I'm going to use the underscores starter theme for this demonstration. And what you're going to notice in virtually all well-coded themes, you're going to see the WP underscore head functions included right before the closing head tag within the header.php file. Now this is important to have so that way your theme plays nicely with plugins and the way WordPress works because if you're using a plugin, let's say an SEO plugin that wants to insert meta information inside of your header.php file, it's going to need this WP underscore head function uh, call here to be included right before the closing head tag. And that will ensure that the plugin will be able to properly insert the information it needs to within this head section. All right, so this is very important to have when you're developing themes. All right, so now we're going to move on to the footer.php file. And we have something similar here. We have the WP underscore footer function. And what this does, it enables your theme to play nicely again with plugins and WordPress itself. So that way you can insert information or items within the footer section of your of, of your theme and website. So you're going to need this WP underscore footer function that's built into WordPress di by default inside of your theme in the footer.php file. So now let's move on to the functions.php file. Now I'm going to scroll down. And in this section, get template directory function. This is another built-in uh, function of WordPress. This is going to the uh, your themes directory, the root, and it's going to look for the languages file. So this is for the loading theme text domain. So this is uh, important for that uh, particular feature there. And now let's scroll down, and we're going to go to the scripts section, scripts and styles. All right, so this one, we have a function that we created right here. And then this is built into WordPress, the WP underscore Q underscore style. This is looking for our main style sheet. You give it a designation and then you're using the get underscore style sheet underscore URI function in order to get the main style.css file for your theme. And that's important to have. And then for the JavaScript files, you're going to see we have the WP underscore NQ underscore script function here. You give it a designation and then you have the get underscore template underscore directory URI. And then it's going to the, again, to the root of our theme uh, folder structure, going to the JavaScript folder, the JS folder, and then looking for the navigation.js file. Then it's including it here. And then also the same thing for your other JavaScript files. All right, so now towards the bottom, we have the require command and we're getting that we get template directory function here. We're going to the root, we're looking into the include, into the ink folder, and then we're looking for the custom um, dash header.php file right here. So we're able to use all the information that's inside of that file in our theme because it's being included, it's being required. And the same thing for the other files as well. So if you want to create your own functions, this is how you would include them. You would create a file. It could be whatever name you want it. It could be located anywhere in your theme uh, folder structure that you want. Just make sure you put require and then get underscore template underscore directory function. You append a string with the folder location and then the file that you're looking to include. And then you can add your own custom function. So in this case, we have this template dash tags .php file created where we have functions that are being included. If you don't include it in this manner, these functions won't be available uh, to use within your theme. So that's why you want to do that properly. So now let's go to the index.php file. And at the top, you're going to see we have the get underscore header function. And this is getting the header.php file and including all that information for the header of our of our website. So that's why you need this here. And this makes sure that your code is modular where it's not one file with thousands upon thousands of lines of code. You have it more modular, easier to maintain when you're updating information to your theme. 
You also go down and you see you have the get template parts function right here. And this is going to the uh, root of our theme. This is going to look for the template parts folder and then looking for the content.php file. You don't need the file extension. You just put the content and WordPress knows how to work with this here. And then if nothing is found in this particular case, we're going to get the content none file. At the end of that page, you see we have the get uh, dash sidebar function, which is getting the sidebar.php file. And we have the get underscore footer function, which is getting the footer.php file. So that's how that works. And then again, like I mentioned before, you can create your own functions to be included as you see fit. But just check to see if a function already exists within WordPress because WordPress gives you a lot of functions to work with. Now, if you're not sure what a function does, or if you want a more thorough explanation, you can always just take this here, copy the get template part, and then depending on your text editor, you can go to find, find and project, and then you can run the search, find all. And it'll show you everywhere where that particular piece of code is mentioned or included or used within your folder structure. So in this case, I have the entire WordPress core with all the folders and files. So it shows me everywhere where it's being included. But a better way, one that I recommend everybody follow, is to get familiar with the uh, code reference that WordPress develops for us. So now you can also just take that same piece of code and then you can just search for it. And then it'll show you every potential option that you have for it. So in this get template part, gives you the description, what it does, gives you the parameters, what's required, what's optional, tells you where the main uh, source of the code is located at, is located in the, in the WP dash includes forward slash general dash template dot PHP file. You can see the um, full code snippet there and you can view it on the track. And then you see more information about it, related uses, and then user contributed notes. Uh, when they have them, this is some of the information they provide. So definitely get familiar with the code reference because this will come in handy when you're developing your themes and plugins to identify what functions, what uh, hooks, what classes, what methods are being used by WordPress, what's already generated. You can view all of them. You can see what's good for the API. And then speaking of that, you could always go to the main page, developer.wordpress.org, and then they have a themes handbook. When you're developing themes, you definitely want to reference this. When you're developing plugins, they have a plugins handbook, and then they have the REST API handbook as well, and then the code reference. So get familiar with this because this is, you know, a lot of helpful information when you're developing for WordPress. And then when you're developing your themes, you want to see what, you know, file is going to be used depending on the uh, page or post is being uh, queried by a website visitor, this WordPress template hierarchy is a good reference point because it'll show you, you know, what types of files you can create and what WordPress will be looking for. So this is the main file, but then you can customize the way each post or page is displayed by, you know, um, using different types of files. So if you're displaying the, t uh, the a tag page that's of all your tag uh, articles, you can create a tag.php file and then you can customize that to look different from the category.php file or from the index.php file. So that way you give it a different look and feel on the various uh, way your site is structured. So you can create these specific files for that. So get familiar with this WordPress template hierarchy website right here. And I'll leave a link in the description section below. So those are two great resources online. And again, what I always recommend is to make sure that you're looking at themes and plugins and seeing how they operate, how they use their folder structure and things of that nature. And that'll give you a huge head start when you're developing for WordPress. But basically that's how you include certain files and folders within WordPress and how WordPress operates. So this was just a general overview. Uh, so that way you can get started. And again, download a good text editor like Adam text editor and download the whole entire WordPress core and then start poking around, seeing what's 
there. And you can find all the functions, all the methods, all the classes uh, that you need information on. And then you can start building out your own themes and your own plugins. All right, so hopefully you found this episode helpful. I just wanted to, you know, show you how WordPress operates and some of the functions that it uses when including files and folders and other aspects of WordPress into the various themes and plugins, etc. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll give you more tips and tricks on how to manage your WordPress powered website and how to develop WordPress themes. And in the future, I'm going to include some videos on how to develop plugins as well. So again, thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Take care.